When I started building my 3D model of titanium, I visited ptable.com. Titanium has an atomic number of 22, which means that there are 22 protons and 22 electrons. Titanium has an atomic num um, mass of 48. 48 minus 22 is 26. Therefore, there are 26 neutrons in the typical atom of titanium. The 22 electrons are distributed into four shells containing 2, 8, 10, and 2 electrons um, respectively. But what caught my attention was that Argon's third shell contains 8 electrons, while Krypton's third shell contains 18 electrons. Therefore, we know that the third shell could hold at least 18 electrons. Going from Argon to Potassium, we would expect the next electron to go into the third shell, yielding an electron configuration of 2, 8, 9. But instead, the electron of potassium goes into the fourth shell, giving us 2, 8, 8, 1. Moreover, the next electron of calcium also goes to the fourth shell, giving us 2, 8, 8, 2. It's not until we reach scandium in the transition metal range when the third shell resumes filling until zinc where the third shell is completely filled with 18 electrons and the fourth shell resumes filling. This interruption in the filling of the third shell fascinated me and I decided to do research on Wikipedia and also ask my dad about what is going on. One explanation my dad suggested was for me to go back to the hydrogen atom and to think of it as a stadium where the single electron can be thought of as a spectator who has to run around continuously in its assigned zones. These zones have names, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p. The number in these names correspond to the shell to which they belong to. Zones or orbitals with the same shell number are considered to offer equally good views. So supposing we are in charge to assign hydrogen a single electron so that it has the best possible view of the center, where should we assign it to? Obviously 1s, because 1s is the closest to the center. They asked my dad where all these fancy shapes for, for the orbitals come from. He explained to me that these shapes are actually solutions to the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics. For one, for one electron and a central positive charge, the equation with the white background is the Schrodinger equation, whose solution is below with the dark background. The Schrodinger's equation is a difficult one and has not been solved for atoms containing two or more electrons. Instead, scientists use an approximation. They assign electrons sequentially into zones that offer them the best view. These zones, um, Schrodinger also limits the capacity each of these zones can hold. The s orbitals could hold two, the p orbitals could hold six, the d orbitals could hold 10, and so forth. Now remember my original question, which was why the filling of the third shell gets interrupted going from argon to potassium. Argon's 18 electrons fill in 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p. And the 19th electron, potassium, can choose whether to go to the 3d orbital or the 4s orbital. The 3d orbital is overall closer to the center on average, but while the forest orbital is farther away. But there are, remember that there are already 18 electrons blocking the view of the 19th electron, regardless of whether it is placed in the 3D or the 4S orbitals. Then take a closer look. My dad saw these orbitals in half. The 3D orbital consists of four lobes and is indeed overall closer to the center while the 4s orbital consists of four concentric spherical shells. But notice that the 4s orbital sometimes allows electrons to get into the innermost shell so that it can have um, an unblocked view of the center. Um, in contrast, the 3D does not allow electrons to get as close as they can as the 4s orbital. So, the 19th and 20th electrons of potassium and calcium go to the 4s orbital. And it's not until the, um, 20, um, the uh, 4s orbital is filled does the 3d orbital 
what was even filling. I learned a lot. Electrons going around at, um, in the atoms is actually very different than planets going around the sun. Electrons are better thought of as crazy spectators who run around at 1% the speed of light. At this speed, they could go around the Earth in 18 seconds. Now imagine going at that speed inside an atom. Electrons of elements are, um, are assigned to unfilled zones sequentially that offer them the best possible view of the center. A few orbitals, especially the s orbitals, allow electrons to get really close to the center on occasion and let them have the ability to sense all the protons in there. Yes, I know what you're thinking, but if you were assigned to a 4s orbital or any electron in any orbital, you cannot just stay in the center always. You have to always be moving around continuously. Following Schrodinger's equation. The 4s orbital can only hold two electrons, even though that it consists of four, um, four concentric spherical shells. And the electrons have no difficulty going from shell to shell. So, think about this. If I remove the 4s label, and put in 2, 8, 10, and 2 red dots that symbolize the electrons. Wouldn't it look almost like a Bohr model of titanium? But in reality, it's, a, only, a, um, it's only a 4s orbital. As with any learning, new questions arise. When I was building my 3D model of titanium, I had a lot of difficulty trying to make it scale because the nucleus has to be a hundred thousand times smaller than the 4s orbital, the radius. And then I can't pack in 22 balls of protons and 26 balls of neutrons in that small of an area, uh, I meant volume. And this led to my thinking, what keeps all of these 22 protons in such a close volume? Because positive charges repel each other. This is called the, the force that keeps these protons together. It's called the strong force of nature and is referred to that by physicists. And is um, the basis for um, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion.